Have you ever wondered what is that A in Chick fil A? See, the first part in the name comes from chicken fillet. That's obvious. But what about the A? The capital A at the end symbolizes top quality. But just claiming top quality in your name or advertising doesn't mean much. But Chick-fil-A has been able to transfer words into results. Do you know which fast food restaurant in United States has most sales per store? Did you say McDonald's? No. Starbucks? No. Subway? No again. It's Chick-fil-A. And Chick-fil-A achieved this success despite being famously open only six days a week. This when all its competitors are open all seven days. But then why is Chick-fil-A most successful? It's not by accident. Chick-fil-A is using some very smart branding and marketing strategies to win over customers and increase its sales. We'll learn about those in this video. As you hear about those, also think about which other companies employ these strategies. And can you also use some of these in your own business or even regular life and relationships? Chapter 1 The Chick-fil-A Origin Story Chick-fil-A was founded by Truett Cathy. He opened the first Chick-fil-A in 1967 in Atlanta's Greenbrier Mall, one of the first indoor malls in the Southeast. But Truett Cathy's journey began much earlier. He opened his first restaurant in 1946. It was a small restaurant in Atlanta called the Dwarf Grill. While operating this one small location, he continued working on perfecting the recipe for a boneless chicken sandwich. It took him almost 20 years, but he never gave up. Marketing consists of four P's, product, price, place, and promotion. But the first P, product, is very important. And that's our lesson number one. Product is the ultimate purpose of customer's purchase. To create the perfect product, Truett Cathy based his research on his mother's method of cooking chicken with a heavy top that trapped moisture and heat. So Cathy tried cooking boneless chicken breasts in a pressure cooker. Eventually, the experiment was a success. He found that he could cook a piece of boneless chicken in fraction of time that it will take to cook it on a pan or even a grill. He continued years of trial and error with different mix of seasoning and breading. Truett Cathy would ask his customers to taste his recipe and give feedback. After testing out hundreds of recipes, Truett Cathy finally perfected the recipe for the original chicken sandwich in 1964. The recipe consists of about 20 seasonings taken in perfect portions to create the perfect chicken fillet. The boneless chicken fillet was served with two pickles on a toasted butter bun. As for the price, the original Chick-fil-A sandwich was sold for 59 cents in 1967. The recipe has remained the same over the years. It is so popular that just a few years ago, even some McDonald's franchisee asked McDonald's to introduce a similar chicken sandwich. Chapter 2 Initial Growth The first Chick-fil-A restaurant opened on November 24, 1967 in Atlanta's Greenbrier Mall. Putting a restaurant inside malls was a relatively newer idea at that time. Truett Cathy had to actually convince the mall owners that having a restaurant inside the mall would not create too much smoke or generate too much trash. While other competitors like McDonald's were opening more and more standalone restaurants, Truett Cathy opted for smaller restaurants inside malls. In fact, Chick-fil-A didn't open a standalone restaurant for almost 20 years. The marketing strategy used by Cathy was slow growth marketing. According to the data published by Small Business Administration, only 50% of the businesses survive after five years of operations and 70% of the businesses fail within first 10 years of operations. So Truett Cathy was very careful and conservative in planning Chick-fil-A's growth. That slow but solid growth in the initial years created a base on which further faster growth can eventually take place. There are some major benefit of the slow growth marketing. First, more thoughtfulness, intention and purpose. There is something to be said for taking your times with things. When you take your time, you can be more thoughtful, intentional and purposeful. Second is less burnout. If you're busy all the time, rushing to get things done, there is a chance of getting burned out fast. Avoiding the burnout in your business will keep you going steady for longer term growth. Third is it's cheaper with less investment required. This slow growth strategy allowed Truett to grow without taking on too much debt. See, it was a much cheaper investment to open a Chick-fil-A in a mall than buying up land and building up a standalone restaurant. Even today, when Chick-fil-A is a very established brand, it has kept the startup cost of starting a Chick-fil-A franchisee among the lowest in the category. Chapter 3 The Franchisee Model It only costs the franchisee $10,000 to start a new location and the company doesn't even require the candidates to meet a certain threshold either for net worth or for liquid assets. That's cheaper than every other major fast food chain in the US. McDonald's, for example, requires the franchisees to pay anywhere between 1.5 to 2.5 million dollars in startup cost, including $45,000 in franchisee fee, according to McDonald's FDD. 
potential Taco Bell franchisees pay the same $45,000 franchisee fee along with the total startup cost ranging between $1.4 to $2.5 million according to their 2022 FDD. Chick-fil-A has purposefully kept the startup cost so low. They want to make sure that money should not be a problem for the right person who wants to start up Chick-fil-A franchise. This is what they say. We seek to find business-minded restaurant operators who find great joy in making other people's days. So here we see another very important marketing strategy. Choosing the right fit for the franchisee. A franchisee should mirror your value and brand. The challenge to becoming a franchisee is never going to be money. That's what Chick-fil-A has declared. Of course, Chick-fil-A is a business at the end of the day, so they do know how to make money. So while a Chick-fil-A costs very less upfront, the franchisee end up paying a lot more to the company in order to operate the business. See, McDonald's charges an ongoing monthly fee equal to 4% of gross sales. While Chick-fil-A franchisee pay a base operating fee of about 15% of sales and an additional fee of 50% of net profits. Both McDonald's and Chick-fil-A also charge rent with the Golden Arches charging about 10.7% on an average for rent whereas Chick-fil-A caps it rent charges at about 6% of sales. So you might be tempted to think, let me arrange $10,000 somehow and I should be able to start a Chick-fil-A franchisee tomorrow. While that's theoretically possible, it's not really easy to become a Chick-fil-A franchise. Out of more than 40,000 business inquiries that Chick-fil-A receives every year, Chick-fil-A only selects about 75 to 80 new franchisees. That is less than 1% of acceptance rate. Your kids' chances of getting into Harvard are better. Chapter 4. The competitive differentiators at Chick-fil-A. First is politeness as a brand differentiator. The company's focus on acknowledgement, respect, and even showing love to customers has become category-killing brand differentiator. The fast food industry tracks and reports on every fast food interaction, and Chick-fil-A is the reigning champion on politeness in the drive-thru. This 2016 study rated Chick-fil-A's drive-thru as number one in politeness to the customer. This brings us to our next business strategy. Good customer experience leads to brand loyalty. Chick-fil-A continues to win with employees trained specifically in the factors that impact customer experience. Having a pleasant demeanor, making and maintaining eye contact, smiling, saying please, thank you. In the drive-thru, employees often go out to speed up the line and make face-to-face -face contact while taking orders on electronic pads. Once you experience all of this at Chick-fil-A, and then if you visit any other restaurant, the difference becomes very apparent. But it also has its share of ardent supporters. I recently visited a famous pizza chain, and the employee there became visibly irritated that I didn't give him the exact information that he was expecting the very first time. I saw my name and number displayed on the screen in the store, which says ready for pickup. So I just told him I'm number one on the screen, but he was visibly irritated. He told me to give him my name, which I did. But even after that, he made sure to inform me that giving any other info than the last name throws them off and while he was working on a clock. Not a great experience. So even if the customer has to pay a little extra, the customer will crave that experience and return back to Chick-fil-A. Brand loyalty. Chick-fil-A has managed to create a culture of employees on a mission to give customers positive experience with fast food that has made kindness a differentiator. And how does Chick-fil-A ensure that the employees constantly give this positive experience to customers and keep them happy? By ensuring that the employees themselves are kept happy. Happy employees. See, Truett created something truly special at Chick-fil-A, an enduring culture that constantly values people above anything else. One of the reasons employees treat customers well is due to their positive working environment. Glassdoor has constantly rated Chick-fil-A as one of the 100 best places to work for. Chick-fil-A manages to attract and keep happy employees by offering generous compensation package, flexible working hours, and opportunities for growth and development. So the next business strategy to note is happy employees, happy customers. And this is especially true for service industries. One key differentiator that is often discussed is Chick-fil-A's unique policy of being closed on Sundays. Kathy established this tradition when he opened the first Dwarf Grill back in 1946 and the tradition has continued ever since. This is what Chick-fil-A says. Our restaurants are closed on Sundays to give our team members an opportunity to rest and enjoy time with their families and friends before beginning the week again on Monday. It's estimated that this family-owned business loses almost $1.2 billion every year for being closed on Sundays. But that hasn't hurt sales. In fact, Chick-fil-A also leads the industry with 51 years of continuous sales growth, even through various recessions. See, it's nearly impossible for any of 
its competitors to now let go of the revenue that they are getting today and start being closed on Sundays. So this has become the USP for Chick-fil-A to attract and retain the best talent. And that's the strategy. Have a USP for recruiting best talent. As a business owner, your ultimate success depends on how you and your leaders manage your most valuable resource, your employees and your relationships. Before Kathy died in 2014 at the age of 93, he set up a contract with his children. The contract stated that while they were free to sell Chick-fil-A, the company should never go public. This is his way of ensuring that the core culture at Chick-fil-A remains true to his vision and does not get affected by the constant pursuit of profit over everything else. Do let me know in comments what has been your experience with Chick-fil-A. Are there other aspects that appeal to you? If you like this video, check out this other video about how Aldi uses unique strategies, dominate and grow in a very competitive grocery market. I would also appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.